Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to learn how to create and assign some materials. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. All right, let's learn how to create some materials. So um, I have our scene open. Here's our room that we created. And in the left, I have the outliner open as well, because I noticed um, there's some objects that are sitting outside our room group. I'm just going to throw all of those in the group. So I'm selecting the light switch, holding down shift, selecting vase number three, and then I'm using the middle mouse button. I'm holding that down and dragging that over our group. And there we go. Everything's inside the group. Yeah. So now let's create some materials. At the top here, you'll see this ball-like icon. Click on that, and that will open up our Hypershade window. And the Hypershade window is Maya's um, shader editor, so like shader network. And you essentially connect nodes here, and those nodes are used for materials, textures, and lights, and even effects. But we're really only concerned today with creating the materials. Um, the Hypershade um, opens by default with some um, default shaders, some materials, and you want to leave those alone. You can see them up here because those are used um, already used by Maya. So for example, I'm just going to minimize our window. Uh, let's see if I can grab our little thing here. And this is the hypershade over here. Um, for example, say I make a new object, say a sphere. That sphere uses Lambert 1. So we want to leave that alone. I'm just going to delete the sphere. Also, um, what, what I normally do is I'll take the Hypershade window and I'll pin it to the left here, right? That's I just want to show you how to get to the Hypershade window, but I have a workspace set up where I have that pin. So I'm going to close the Hypershade and I'm going to open that up that workspace instead. There we go. All right, so let, how do we create a new material? On the left here, you'll see Maya. And just on the right, there's a bunch of um, shaders, right? And if you look down, there's Lambert. So click on that one, and Maya will create another Lambert. So here's Lambert 2. So Lambert 2 is selected right now, so let's rename it. I'm going to call it Base Color base color 1. Okay. And then for fun, I'm just going to change the color. Um, so if you hover over color here, and pick on that, so so click on that, I should say, you'll get um, the color editor. And um, here's the color wheel with a gradient um, picker in the middle. And then you have some uh, values here, right? You can manually put those in. Also, you can save some swatches up the top, and you have a color picker right here. Here's your shader ball, right? So going back to here. If you uh, pull the mouse away, it removes, it takes away the color picker. So Click on the color again, and I'm just going to change the color so to something like this. Now you see the shader ball update, and let's learn how to add it to one of these objects. So um, to add the material to one of our objects, what you can do is just hover over the shader you want to pick, hold down the middle mouse button, and drag that over one of your objects. So let's drag it over the sofa, then let go. And now that color, or the sofa, is now using this color. Um, I want to turn off wireframe unshaded so you guys can see that a little better as well. All right, let's do that with another object. Holding down the middle mouse button, dragging, and let's drag it over something random, maybe this um, side table, which I keep wanting to call the coffee table for some reason. Okay, so that's one way to add the color to it. Another way is to select the objects you want to add. So maybe I want to select this one. And I'll select this one as well, holding down shift, selecting that one. And then now if I hover over the color I want, hold down the right mouse button, you'll get this marking menu come up. And then I can just go assign material to selection. And there you go. That's a couple ways to add colors to those objects. Um, and what you'll notice every once in a while is um, things start disappearing in this if I've minimized this too small. So let me just see if I can increase that a little bit, right? Um, yeah, so you just need to drag these windows a little bit and these options will come back. It's kind of weird. Um, just gonna reduce that a little bit. All right, so when I'm working in the scene, 
what I also like to do is um, let's go back to the regular workspace or at least my workspace. Sometimes what I like to do is I'm just, I'm just going to close the outliner is I'll select an object. And if I have a material I've already used, I can also right click here, go down to assign assisting material. And we have base color one sitting right here. If I let go there, I've assigned a material to there as well. Also, if you right click from here, you can also create new material. So I can assign a new material and let's let go here and I can choose maybe one of the Maya materials. So um, I can choose Lambert again and Lambert's um, pretty standard material. It has some diffuse properties. You can change the ambient color, but it's pretty limiting. Um, another shader you can use is the blend shader. So if I um, select the blend shader here, it's going to create a new blend shader. And if you go into the attribute editor, you can see now that coffee table is using the blend one. So if we click on that, it's the same as going into, let's just open the hypershade from here. Um, this blend one, right? So in this blend one, you can scroll down, you have these properties, but since we just assigned the material to the coffee table, it's also in its attribute. So I'll just, close this. Hopefully this is not getting too confusing for you guys, but um, for example, the sofa where we assign the base color one in the attribute editor, right? We have this node, which is the base color um, input. Well, yeah, no, um, base color one, right? So here we go. And it has that color and the coffee table is just using blend one. So let's rename blend one to just call it base color two, I guess for now. All right. And the difference with the, um, the blend is that it has more reflective and specular properties. So the Fong shader and the blend shader, the Fong shader, I'll just show you, um, they are very similar, except, um, the highlights a little bit different and some probably other properties, but the Fong, I believe, has more options for you. Here's your Fong shader down here. It also renders faster. I think the Fong E render, renders faster. Yeah, so let's um, give this one a color as well. So I'm clicking on that. I'll just give this maybe a, a brownish color for now. And you can see that on the flat object, it doesn't really show the reflective properties that well, but if I click on this one and hold down the right mouse button and assign my existing material base color to, right? If I click off, you can see the reflections now. So those specular properties, and you can change those. So I can go in here, go into the base color, and I can maybe change the eccentricity a little bit. Actually, that's hard to see from here. Let's open up my workspace, go into the hypershade, and you can see the shader bra, how different it is. So I click on this one and change some of these ones. You can see it update on our object as well. Yeah. And those are that, that is how you assign and create shaders, create and assign, I should say. Um, there's another shader that, that I use a lot and it's for rendering and it's the Arnold shader. So here in the hyper shader, if you go to the Arnold tab and right under shader, we have the AI standard service, click on that one. And this is the shader that um, you might want to play with because in the next part, we'll be making a quick render and Arnold uses that shader. So Arnold is a uh, Maya's built-in renderer, by the way. So um, let's, find our Arnold shader. And for the Arnold shader, how I'd like to rename it is I always like to call it AI first. So I know that I'm calling that I know that I'm using the Arnold shader and then I'll just call it base and let's assign it to maybe this door and door handle. So I'm clicking on the door and, um, we can assign it by just holding down the middle mouse button, dragging it over our door and let's just reduce. color of that a little bit. So yeah, so now it's on the door. What you'll notice though, that is that one for one, if you scroll down, um, first I have to select it. Oh, actually I made a boo-boo. I changed my Lambert one, didn't I? Okay. So let's undo that. Or did I hang on? 
Did I? I have to go back and check the replay. Sometimes that happens when I open this up. Um, I'm on the Lambert 1, right? So AI base, there we go. And let's call this um, AI. And that'll happen to you as well. Just watch out for that one. Um, hopefully it doesn't. AI base color underscores are one. And then I think I was on Lambert because when I tried to scroll down, I didn't find all these other properties. All right, so you'll notice that the Arnold shader has a ton of other options, transmission, code sheen, emission, and, um, but they don't always show up when you change them. And that's because um, you really need to see them once it's rendered. Um, so yeah, so this is it. That's how you assign and create shaders, play around, start maybe putting some colors to some of your objects if you want. I'm probably going to keep my scene fairly neutral, maybe use one or two colors and then do the render, but you're welcome to um, create the materials and add them as you wish, as you please. And yeah, let's open up um, this again, the regular view. And that is how you have the colors. If we click on the door, you can see it's using the AI base color. So yeah. So that wraps things up for today. Um, our scene is looking great and it's ready for a render. And that's what we'll do in the next part. And yeah, um, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.